Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Just Finish Coding series. So I was going through projects in the Scratch website the other day and I came across this fantastic project called Elf Run. And it's basically a 3D runner, um, a kind of mini subway surfers if you want to think about it. And you just have an elf and you have to try and dodge all the cars which are coming in your way. So I've had to mute all the sound effects of this game because in case I play them, YouTube is definitely going to take my video down. So credits to Pull Josh for making this original project on which I've uh, improvised slightly upon and also for the fantastic game art which he's come up with. Alright, so without further ado, let's get right into our code. Alright, so before we begin, I'd encourage you to download this entire Scratch file from the link in the description and the link would take you to a Google Drive attachment and once you're there, you can download this file which says elf run blank. And the reason I'm asking you to download this entire Scratch file and not just the images is because for this project to work, you need the images to be positioned precisely. And if you look at the background sprite, for example, many of the images uncentered example this road and the sizes also matter a lot and um, uh, the problem is when we start to import these images scratch has some kind of bug where it not only just centers the images by default but it also uh, sometimes doubles the size for some images and not for others so it was a really really weird bug and i got stuck with it for a long time and this method just speeds us up a whole lot um, so i'd recommend you download the file itself and once you're ready with it, you can head over to the player sprite and start off by having um, two variables initialized. So the first one, I'm going to call it target lane and you can set it for this sprite only. And I'm doing all the, um, you know, for this sprite only variables in lowercase. And the next variable I'll do once again is going to be in all lowercase, meaning for the sprite only. And this is going to be called lane animation. So you can hide these two variables. You don't really need them to be seen. And after this, you can head over to the stage itself. And just so that you know, you can write code in your stage. It really doesn't make a difference. So uh, when the green flag is clicked, what I'll do is I'll grab a forever loop from the control section. And what I'll do, uh, oops, not a repeat until, a forever loop. And what I'll do before we get into the forever loop is to head over to events and say broadcast message one and wait. Um, now you can change that message one to be init and this just uh, means you know for all the sprites to get ready with their initialization so that they are ready to start and after we're done with this we can head over and broadcast game tick or just tick so what tick is going to do is it's going to go across every sprite and it's going to make sure uh, the sprite does something for that particular tick so you can see it's some kind of like a frame rate kind of thing um, not exactly, but I, you probably get the idea. So each and every time this message is broadcasted and received, all of the objects do something and only after all of those things are finished do we broadcast tick once again. Alright, so that's pretty much all we need to do within the stage. We can get back into the player and we can start this with a when I receive init. So when we receive init, it's important to just set up these two variables. So I'm going to set lane animation and target lane and incidentally I'll set target lane first to zero and I will also set lane animation to be just the target lane or zero in this case. Now you're probably wondering at this point what the lane actually is and many of you would probably guess that um, lane number represents one of these three lanes. So the center lane is going to be lane zero. Um, the right lane, which is this one where my mouse is, it's going to be lane one. And the left one is going to be lane negative one. Now, please do not get confused with this here because these lanes are going to be unique um, sprite by sprite. And that's because it just makes math easier for the player this way, but it makes math more difficult uh, when we get into the background, for example. But as of now, those are the three lanes that you need to think about, and that would be enough. So the lane animation is just a way for the player to move around the lane smoothly because we wouldn't want the player to just dramatically disappear from a lane and appear on another lane just like that. We'd want a smooth transition. So the lane animation is going to smoothly, you know, step by step go from the target lane to uh, from the current lane to whatever the target lane might be. So for example, if the current lane is zero and the target lane is one, the lane animation would change, you know, like 0 0.2, 0 0.2 times so that the player smoothly goes on to this lane. 
So you'll start to see um, the way this goes on in a second. But as of now, this is what you'll need to have in your init. All right, so now we can start to do what I was just talking about. So when we receive, um, this is going to be game tick or just tick. And I'm gonna zoom out so that you guys can see better. So when we receive tick, I'm going to get into two if then conditions. So first I'll be checking if, uh, and now we can grab a greater than. And the first condition is going to be if the lane animation is smaller than target lane. So you have to remember here that our ultimate goal is to get the lane animation to be the target lane, but we're gonna do that in a series of smaller steps. So if the lane animation is smaller than the target lane, then obviously we need the lane animation to get bigger and bigger in order to equal the target lane. So this time I'll change lane animation by 0.2 and now you can duplicate this if, um, if condition and you can just switch these two things around. So if the lane animation is greater than target lane, then we'd want the lane animation to get smaller and hence we change it by negative 0.2. So eventually uh, we are going to reach a point when the lane animation is equal to the target lane. But since we're dealing with decimals, it's important to be a little careful here. So instead of just saying if lane animation is equal to target lane, what we can do is we'll say if, and now we can grab this block from operators which says absolute value of. Okay, and now we can put this here. And you can see if absolute value of, and you can grab a minus and nest it within the absolute value of. And uh, within this, you can either put lane animation minus target lane or target lane minus lane animation. It really doesn't make a difference since absolute value just takes the plus. So even if this equated to plus five or negative five, hypothetically, it would still result in, the, um, in this being plus five and it won't really change a thing. So if all of this is less than 0.1, okay? If this is the case, then what we can do is we won't change lane animation by anything, but we'll simply set the lane animation to be the target lane. And that will be pretty much it. So if we have this within the tick, this will ensure that these three if then conditions will ensure that the lane animation and the target lane move around smoothly. Now this alone isn't going to be enough to make sure our character moves around the lanes. And to do that, we need a go-to. So now we can head into the motion category and you can grab a go-to X and a go-to Y. So within our X, it's fairly simple. You can just head over to operators and grab a multiplied by, and you can just say times 30 and drag and drop this lane animation block within it. So within our Y, it's going to be slightly more complicated. So if you look at what our current Y position is, we're not in the center yet. So it's not gonna be negative 116, but we can do something like this. We can grab a minus and we can put a multiplied by nested within the uh, right side of it. So we can say go to y negative 105 and we would say minus lane animation times 30 and that would be pretty much it. So if you have this in place, this will ensure that the x and y positions are correct. And uh, you can also just point in direction 90 to make sure that our character is always pointed in the correct direction. And this won't really make a difference now, but you'll start to see that when we have our ending animation and where we have our character swirling around, this does play a very important role in um, each and every game tick. So this is going to be pretty much all you need as of now. So um, now we can head over to the side and it's time for us to make a new block. And I'm going to um, call this block move by. And after this, I'm going to follow this by uh, an input and I will just call the input n and you can add a label once again and call this lanes. So we move by n lanes and you can run this without a screen refresh, but I'd recommend you don't because this involves a sound effect and that could be quite disastrous. So if you have this, you can just click okay and you can just move this block to the side like I mentioned. And um, within this, um, we'll basically be calling this block and I'll do that first. So we will say when a key is pressed, so when space key is pressed, and you can change this to left arrow key. Um, you can do this for the A and D keys as well, but I'm just gonna do it for the left and right arrow keys. So if the left arrow key is pressed, then we'd wanna go to this lane, and remember that that particular lane is minus one. So if we are at zero and we move by minus one, and similarly, if we're at one, we'd want to move to zero. So move by minus one lanes, and similarly, when the right arrow key is pressed, we want to do the exact opposite. So if key right arrow is pressed, we just move by one lanes, and that would be pretty much it. 
So now within this, all we have to do is to change the lane animation and the, uh, I'm sorry, not the lane animation, but the target lane um, in a desired way. So first we can just say change target lane by N and this will make sure that the target lane changes. For example, if our current lane is one, uh, I'm sorry, if our, current if our target lane is zero, this would change it to negative one if we press the left arrow key. But the problem with this is if we're already at negative one, then the target lane would become negative two, and then we'd have a whole bunch of problems to go along with this. So the simple solution is to have a couple of if-thens to make sure that the target lane doesn't exceed the boundaries. So we can say if um, target lane is less than negative one, and you can just grab the target lane block from the variables once again like this. And if this is the case, then all we have to do is just set the target lane back to negative one. And similarly, we can just flip this condition over. We can say that if one is greater than, uh, if one is lesser than the target lane, then once again, we'll just set the target lane to one. And I also wanna make sure that the game has a nice air into it. And as a result, I'm going to use a sound effect, which by default should have been um, imported when you got in the scratch file. So it's called whoosh sound effect. And you can just call this. Um, now, because I want to avoid some privacy strikes on YouTube, I'm going to make sure that all the uh, sounds on my system are muted, including the music, which you'll add later on. So um, uh, don't feel um, worried in case you don't hear stuff on my laptop. As long as you hear it on your own, it means stuff is working fine. So you can just add in a play sound until done or just a start sound, which makes more sense because the loop would continue going on. So you can add a start sound whoosh and that would be pretty much it. And I'm gonna start testing this out. So I will move by left and then move by right. And as you can see, we sort of move, but when we are at the right lane, our character somewhat seems fizzle. So to correct this, we need to make sure that our character is constantly in motion so that you barely notice this thing because this guy is currently in, you know, the running image. And if you get into the standing still image, the player looks a lot more within the lane. So in order to make sure that our player is constantly running, we need to keep changing the player's costume. And in case you just noticed, there were four of them. And uh, what you can do is make use of this block in sensing called timer, which keeps track of how long the player has been on the screen or rather on the scratch project. And I'm gonna check it once and you can see it running here and I'm gonna uncheck it right away. So all you have to do here is just change the costume by something. And I'm gonna say switch costume to, and now you can head over to operators and grab a multiplied by. And all you have to just say is timer multiplied by six. And obviously you could change the six to, I mean, seven or eight or four, whatever works good for you. But as, uh, as it turned out for me, this thing worked pretty neatly. So now when I press the green flag, you can see that our character movement is extremely smooth now and I feel that this is pretty great for the first video. I'm going to end this video here. In the next video, we'll get into the scrolling background and how we can make this illusion a little bit more realistic. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.